W, Ford, Fiat, Chrysler, you know, Audi, you know, almost all of them were affected. So you have to check if your vehicle is within uh, the, uh, the VIN numbers are affected. What actually happens is that in case there is an impact, or probably maybe there is an accident or a crash, the airbag, instead for it to just deploy, it explodes. Hmm. Yeah. So now the component in the airbag now travels to a point where it can eat the passenger or the driver and there are records that it has caused death. You understand? So we are talking about tens of millions of vehicles who are included in this uh, record. So you also need to check. I have a friend that drives a 2008 Honda CRV, mm. just got an email and he's the second owner of that vehicle. So he got an email that he needs to bring his car for airbag replacement at Honda place in, in Lagos here. So and he took it there and it has been changed. So you have to look at it so that you can be sure there's no sense in driving a vehicle and you are not sure if you are safe in case there's an accident. So, so um, and good, good enough, in those days, if there is any recall, it's difficult for Nigerians to partake from it, especially if the vehicle was actually not bought from any of the dealers yeah. in Nigeria yeah, as brand new. Yes. So um, most of the Tukumbo cars use foreign used cars that we use in Nigeria. In those days, if you have any recall, it's always very difficult for us to benefit from all those recalls. But today, I mean, the case is different. You can drive your vehicle to Toyota. You can drive your vehicle to Honda Place. You can drive your vehicle to any of these companies and then make your complaint that, oh, this is the vehicle I'm driving and this is what I've heard concerning this particular component. Mm. It is their duty. It is their obligation for them to attend to you. You know, if they will now go through the VIN, check your vehicle to see if your vehicle falls within the affected vehicle so that you can get that benefit as well. So please, um, um, list viewers out there, do not um, cheat yourself. You know, you can always drive to any of these um, 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 companies, even if the vehicle was not bought from them to get this thing because the manufacturers will reimburse them. That is the, that's, that's okay. the way, that's the standard, that's the way it's been done. So go and have your airbag checked mm -hmm. to see if it falls within the vehicles okay. on the list. All right, thank you very much. I also want to add that uh, TBA was discussing something about using the seatbelt at the rear. <laughs> we are all guilty. I must say I'm guilty. I don't want to say we are all guilty. I want to say I'm guilty, but I've learned today that I should be always sure and that I use the um, seatbelt at the rear. All right, thank you very much for that one. Uh, we have a lot of questions popping in on our social platforms. So we head straight down to the question number one of the day. Uh, this is coming from Abubaka from Abuja. He says, I drive a Pojo 3008. I discovered recently that airbag light started flashing. Please, can you explain what that means and what, it is, what is the implication on my vehicle? Yeah, thank you very much, um, Abubaka. Now, there are two ways you can find the airbag lights on the dashboard. If it stays permanent, it means there is a problem, most, most likely a permanent problem where you need to fix a component. In some cases, where you find the airbag light flashing or blinking on the dashboard, it's most likely an intermittent um, fault. Now, one of, for, for that Pojo 3 um, 008, one of the major um, cause of that is when you're moving your seats, not only that vehicle, for most vehicles, you have the pretensional seat belt connector under the seats. Mm. Sometimes when you're moving the seats, the, your hand may mistakenly touch the connector. And because airbag system works with very, 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 very high resistance, you know, so any little shake like this on the connector, even if it's reconnect back, you see the light blinking. So when the light is blinking, it shows that there's a problem 
in the system, you need to have it checked. But one of the best ways to solve that is that even if you don't have a diagnostic equipment, one of the best ways to do that is disconnect the battery terminal. Go check under the seat. You see a yellow connector. Disconnect the connector, connect it back, the two front um, um, seats, and you'll see that that light will go off. But if it didn't go off, then have it checked. In most cases, it is caused by you're trying to move the seats front, I mean, control the seat back and front, and mistakenly your hand touches the interconnector underneath the seat. It causes that um, airbag to, to flash. So like I said, all you need to do, disconnect the battery terminal first, then disconnect the connector, a yellow um, connector under the seat, connect it back, and put the battery terminal back, then that light should go off. Okay. Right. Is that is that peculiar to the system that, that, that manually adjusted or mm -hmm. automatic? Mostly manually adjusted. Okay. But in at the same time, if anything affects component that is underneath the seat because of the way the connector is, that will affect it as well. So all right, Abu Bakr, you be sure to um, check that out and put it in place. Okay, second question also coming from our social platform. Benro from Ede. Okay, Benro from Ede is asking, I just bought a Toyota Camry 2009. The airbag light is permanently on. The instruments cluster. My mechanic diagnosed it and said my airbag needs servicing. Can we service airbag? <laughs> I, was, I was going to ask this question before now. I don't know that it's, <laughs> somebody has already asked. So, is it possible for us to service airbag? Yes, actually, you know, for some vehicles, that is what you see on your dashboard, service airbag. For some, it will just show you airbag light. What it's trying to tell you is that there is an issue with the system. Then you need to look through the system to find out what the problem is actually. You mm -hmm. understand? Like the first question that was answered, it talked about that that is a form of servicing for 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 the airbag. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. So, but you can't service your airbag by yourself. You have to take it to the professionals because one, the vehicle has to be diagnosed. You have to establish what the problem is. Mm. If any component is needed to be changed, that's to be changed. If it's just a, a matter of socket or just cleaning up some sockets to make sure that there are proper contacts and things like that. So, and um, that, that reminds me when we are talking about the component that made up an airbag for some uh, premium brands, we have something called intelligent battery sensor that also work mm. with the airbag. You understand? It's part of the thing that activates the airbag. That there, there are some. There are some cables on your battery head that, if something is wrong with them, can also trigger on your hair bag lines. You understand? Mm. So, that's why you can't do it on your own. You have to take it to a workshop, a proper assessment, and the workshop will service your hair bag for you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have also Leko from Magodo. Okay, I drive an under element. It once had an accident and the airbag that were deployed has been replaced. But the airbag light is still on, so I'm a bit worried. Please advise. Thank you very much. Lekon from Magodo. Yeah. Okay, and Lekon from Magodo, before I um, answer that question, let me just um, use the next one minute to explain how the, how the airbag system works, even though CBO has um, enumerated the components that uh, made up the airbag um, system. Now, we do used to advise that um, before your airbag app will deploy, I can say this for a fact that more than 90, 99% of vehicles that you find today, if you did not use your seat belt, the airbag will not deploy. Hmm. The reason is because if you're just um, sitting freely, and there is an impact as you're leaning forward the airbag is coming it could even injure the person so what the airbag what the seatbelt does is that it pretensions within 40 microseconds now if there is any impact you know the airbag system works with even your abs or your wheel speed the vehicle speed because in most cases 
if the engine is not running at a particular speed, yeah. even if there is a contact, you know, or there is an impact, the airbag may not deploy in some cases. Whereas in some cases, even if the engine is not, the vehicle is not um, um, running, you know, if the impact is much, in some cases, in some rare cases, the airbag may deploy. Now, the airbag works with the wind speed, with the vehicle speed information, you know. At the same time, um, your seat belts. Now, what are the components? You have your seat belt pretensioner that has its own module. The seat belt has a model inside, okay. you know, it has a control unit itself inside, an IC, an intelligent circuit, in integrated circuit inside, mm -hmm. sorry, you know, that when the airbag deploys, that IC flashes, mm -hmm. tells you that, oh, the airbag are deploying. In fact, in some cases, it will get stuck. You won't be able to pull out the, the, the belt okay. anymore, you know. So, if the vehicle had been involved in an accident. Take for example, it is the one, the airbag on the steering wheel and the dashboard that got deployed. By the time you replace them, there are other components that you need to replace as well, like the seat belt, the two seat belts. Because for the dashboard airbag to deploy, it means that there is a trigger on the right side. So you have to replace the two seat belts, pretensional seat belts, that's one after replacing the um, the airbag itself, then in some cases, you may need to replace the airbag sensor. But in some cases, you may not need to replace the airbag sensor. But because there is a crash, you have to either replace the airbag control module, mm -hmm. that's airbag control unit, with a brand new, but if you cannot get a brand new, you can do what they call res crash resets on the old um, on the old um, on the old control units on the old module. So Lecon that has replaced the two airbags. The next thing I will advise you to replace is the seat belts, the driver seat belts and the passenger, passenger seat belts. Belt. Then you go and do a, an SRS module reset, crash module reset to erase the crash history from the module. Then everything will reset again, or you get a brand new, brand new module. That will solve the problem. Yeah, in okay. addition to that, I will also advise that probably maybe it didn't change the steering wheel connector. You know, this steering angle sensor, as some people call it, uh, they call it slip ring. Yeah. They call it steering wheel connector, they call it steering angle sensor. Some call it um, ribbon, on ribbon. Exactly. It's at the back of your steering. So it's the same component that is responsible for when you turn your, when you press your trafficator light. When you turn, your steering is coming back and it's switching off your trafficator. Hmm. It, it works for your own too. That's why they said, ah, your own is not working. It's not your own that is bad. It's your... They, they, your call, it, they call it uncontrolled. Uncontrolled. Those guys call Some it Some people call it uncontrolled most of the roadside. But the truth is that that component also works for the hairbag. Hmm. In, in case there is uh, a deployment of the driver hairbag, most of the time, you might need to change it. Yeah, because that's where you have your trigger one and trigger two. We call it yeah. a, a, a trigger one, trigger two. So it is from that on ribbon, that steering wheel connector, that is where the trigger comes. Yeah. So in some cases, after that um, 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 deployment of the airbag, you may need to replace that on ribbon together with the airbag module. And so, so but it's always good to um, it's always good that to is. do what. To, to diagnose, yeah, and get trouble codes and work with the trouble codes and solve problems. All right, thank you very much. Uh, TB1 and Patrick have been going technical on me in trigger one, trigger two. <laughs> so uh, you might want to um, check that out. Okay, so the question again coming from our social platforms. I'm a bit worried about blocking of the dashboard light. When the problem has not been resolved, please, how do I check if my airbag is working properly? Add that from equal to. Okay, well, it uh, depends on the car you're using. Um, I, you know, our technicians have found a way to just, you know, they couldn't solve a the problem, they just want to, <laughs> they just want to move ahead and they remove your instrument cluster, what you call speedometer, mm -hmm. and cover the airbag light or whatever light, it could be check engine light, they cover it with a black tape. 
You understand? Some can even paint it black so that when the light is coming up, you will not see anything. But how do you know? When you open the ignition of your vehicle or when you start your vehicle in the morning, normally all the lights on the dashboard are supposed to come up to check whether they are working perfectly. And within two to three seconds, they start coming, going off. You understand? When they go off, you know that, okay, they are working. Um, the, the challenge that what, what you can actually, the only way you can actually know is when you on the ignition, anyone that is not coming up out of all the lights, that's why you have to be familiar with all the lights that are supposed to be coming up in your vehicle because at the point of purchase, the light might have been blocked and you don't even know. You understand? So, going on the internet to check, okay, what are the lights I should see on my dashboard of 2006 Toyota Camry or 2010 Toyota Camry, you know, when you go through something like that, you have an idea of all the lights and what they work for, how they look, especially when you now have your operating manual mm. with you, owner's manual. You can also check everything is written in that owner's manual. That's why, irrespective of the car you're driving. It doesn't stop you from ordering the owner's manual so that you can have an idea, get acclimatized with your vehicle. Now, there are some people that are now taking it to another level where there is a way they work on that light. The light will come up when you on the ignition and go off. You understand? Mm. But that does not mean that your vehicle doesn't have that problem. They are be able to see how they can jump it behind and make sure that that like most of the time they just connect that light to another one that is working properly so so that maybe your check engine light is working properly so when you horn your ignition is come up and it go up so they will now connect your airbag light to that check engine light they change the source <laughs> that that light is getting information and current from to come up so when that Check any light comes up, your airbag lights come, come on, then it go off at the same time. So you may not know. So the best way to know is take your car for complete diagnosis. Mm -hmm. For instance, you can bring it to Auto Geek. We do something called 360 degree check for your car. We tell you the present status of your car because we are going to put diagnostic machine and show you everything, all the port codes that's in your car. We tell you all the modules that have issues that you need to work on. Yeah, All right, sorry. Sorry. Um, okay. I wanted something. to say add okay. something to that. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I, I still believe that some vehicle owners will just say, Ah, I'm tired of all these lights. I don't want to be seeing them. Now, they don't want to find a way to solve. Maybe they've been using one quack mechanic somewhere and um, they've been spending money to solve the problems that is causing those warning lights to come up and they, they, they could not get the problem solved. Or... They just felt, mm, I really don't have money to fix these things and I don't want to be seeing the lights. I've seen situations whereby some vehicle owners will be the ones to tell the technician, please, can you help me find a way to just block all these lights? I don't want to be seeing them. <laughs> Unfortunately for them, whether it is the vehicle owners that are trying to block the light or it is a technician that is trying to manipulate the vehicle owners or the vehicle seller, the car dealers yeah. that sells accidented vehicle, vehicle that has all manner of um, um, trouble and they just try to blindfold or block the lights unfortunately for them for newer modern vehicles we have what they call multifunctional display screen so even if you block all or you manipulate the lights on the instrument cluster there's a small screen again that will be displaying you. Oh, the one that has four so you can never <laughs> ever block that one so please yeah. it is always good i mean your airbag is there for a reason your abs is there for a reason i mean they are there to help you it's not just you driving your vehicle. If these things have problems, sometimes with as little as 5,000 naira, you could get some of these problems solved. Please come diagnose your vehicle, fix your vehicle. There is no use driving a very good car, clean car that looks beautiful. Then all the safety features in the vehicle are not functioning. There is any little accident, I mean, True that. it's yeah. going to be a problem. So please diagnose your vehicle, fix your vehicle. Even if you don't have the money, know the state of your vehicle and prioritize plan on how you can get them fixed to them one after the other i tell you the safety aspect of the vehicle for me is far far more important in fact home as small as on is mm -hmm. i can't drive a car without on i'm telling you mm -hmm. you know so please let's let's do these things it's going to really help us and at the end of the day i mean we'll be, we'll be happy for it 
I think I personally have a problem with um, technicians who are not trustworthy. So I think well, maybe one of these days we're going to discuss that because I'm um, talking about the um, probably some people don't want to see the light and then some people who have blocked it. But I still have a problem with technicians who, who are not truthful to their customers uh, by telling them that, ah, okay, I blocked this because of this, because of that. Do you understand? So maybe one of these days we are going to discuss about technicians in the automobile industry. All right, so let's go straight to the um, last question for the day. That is coming in from Badagri. Wow. It says, I ran into a dish on my way coming from work. My airbag light suddenly came up. I took it up. I took it to my mechanic. He ran a diagnosis, and we have this fault code, B1604. He repaired, he repaired the seat belt, but the light was still on. Please. Can you help me interpret this? Femi from Badagri. Well, Femi. Femi from Badagri was, he said he ran into a dish. That, that road. <laughs> um, system is, um, how would I say, it, it's a very, very active system. You know, in that sometimes when you enter into a bomb, it, it, the light will just come up. It will be as if, um, the ECU, the airbag control model will see it as if it, there, there is an accident, even though the, the, the airbags did not deploy, there is no crash. So that could trigger the airbag lights coming on. Mm. So it could even trigger the pretensional, the pretensional seat belts. Mm. There is no crash. You've not replaced any airbag model, but it is giving you the seat belt, a pretensional seat belt trouble code. Now, what people do is Instead of just repairing the, the, the seat belt and make it free, no, like I said earlier, when I was um, discussing something about how the airbag system works, there's an IC. You'll discover that by the time you take off the seat belt, you see a sign, a black sign, as if something is burnt around the seat belt um, electronics area. You see black as if something is burnt. Whenever it triggers, right? The, whenever the pretension are triggers, it will just hold you down, even though the because the, the control model feels that there's an impact. Mm. The airbag did not deploy, but that seat belt has pretension. So just releasing the seat belt alone will not solve the problem. You need to replace the seat belt because the IC has flashed because of that. Um, so so the issue of oh. The seat belt is now working. You know, I've, I've, I've repaired the seat belt, it's now free. That will not solve the problem. You need to replace the seat belt with the seat belt pretensioner with a functional um, one that has never triggered before. That so will solve does, the problem. Does that, that, does that imply to the code that is popping up? Yes, to? yes, okay. that's, that's the seat belt. Okay. You know, it's important that people need to know that repairing seat belts doesn't work. True. You understand? It doesn't work. You only solve half of the problem. Exactly. The remaining half is still there. When, whenever there's an impact like that, or probably maybe you have those kind of trouble codes coming up, you have to replace it with a new one that has never been, you know. You can get a used one that has never been exposed to any uh, accident or impact before, yeah. or you buy a brand new one. But repairing it, you only solve the problem just for the thing to hold you. Because chances are that even if you have an impact, Later, the pretensioner may not even hold you again because it has been repaired. What's supposed to trigger the the grip is not there. It's no longer there. All right, thank you very much. In case you're just tuning in, we have been discussing vehicle restraint system and we've come to the end of the program today. Um, don't forget that once this live program is um, ended, we are going to upload straight on our youtube channel so be, do um be sure to get the video once we are done my name is olari wadjo i hope you've learned one or two things from um our topic for today which is vehicle restraint system don't forget that you can follow us on all our social media platform which is www.facebook.com forward slash autogigng on twitter is at autogigng on instagram is at autogigng you can also subscribe to our youtube channel which is autogig tv thank you very much and we will see you next week <laughs>